We have been spoiled as NBA fans when it comes to the elite talent in the league. We have seen maybe the greatest player ever for 20 seasons and counting at a high level. We have seen a top 2 point guard ever revolutionize the game in real time. We have seen a 7 footer that's so perfect as a scorer. He changed the way we evaluate small forwards, power forwards, and centers. We have seen a big that legit has an argument for the best playmaker this sport has ever seen. We have seen a guard have one of the greatest scoring stretches in NBA history. We have seen a big that quite literally might be unstoppable as a scorer. We have seen someone turn what many thought was an unbreakable feat into a norm and his brand. We have seen maybe the most dominant player this sport has ever seen on both ends of the floor. My point is that we have seen a lot of great players in the NBA and we should appreciate the great players in basketball today. But there is more than just the present at the same time. There is also the future, and it's a future that I'm very excited about. Because the young talent in the league already, and the talent that will be entering the league very soon, is going to give the next generation a lot to be excited about. Jason Tatum has proven he's a superstar in this league already. He's led the team to a conference finals multiple times, he's made it to the finals, and he's the best player on the best team in basketball right now. Tatum is a player that will be in contention for many scoring titles in the future, and I think we might see one of the greatest scoring seasons of all time in his career. This may sound bold, but I think Tatum could average 35 plus points per game in the league. Donovan Mitchell has already had one of the greatest individual games in NBA history. He's always been an electric scorer with a decent all-around game, and I think being on a good young Cavs team is going to lead to potentially a title or two in the future. Mitchell fits perfectly with this Cavs core that has a blend of offense and defense that make them a team that I think can be contenders as early as next season, and he's going to be a cornerstone for potentially the best non-LeBron Cavs era ever. Spoiler alert, there will be more Cavs players in this video I'll be talking about. I think Bam is one of the most underrated players in the league. He's the best defensive player in basketball in my opinion. It will be a crime if he doesn't win defensive player of the year at least once in his career. He's the definition of defensive versatility due to his strength and movement skills on top of a super high feel for the game that allows him to be one of the few true 1-5 through five defenders, and he's so in growth as a scorer and is one of the best passers at the big man spot in the world. Luka is the best player I'll be talking about in this video. I think of all the players I have and will talk about in this video, he has the best claim for potentially being the best player in the world in the future because he already has a pretty strong case already. He entered the league and immediately was a top 10 player in the world. He statistically has a case for best player for his age at every season for his NBA career. He statistically won the best playoff performers ever, and he finally got his second start. Luka already has a Hall of Fame career, which is insane to think about for somebody this young, and it's even crazy to think that he's just getting started. I already made a video about Sergio Oldis Alexander, but it's never too much you can talk about with him because he's really good. He's having a Hall of Fame level season this year, he's putting up one of the best scoring seasons ever by a guard, and he does it in one of the most unique ways I've ever seen from a guard. He's the centerpiece of one of the brightest young quarters in the league in OKC, and if this season is a sign of things to come, he's going to be in a category of players that a lot of people don't realize he will be and has a chance to be a Hall of Famer. I know Trey Young is having a down year, but he's still averaging around 27 points per game and 10 assists per game. He's done things that no player that small should have any business doing in the NBA. At his best, he's one of the 10 best scorers and 5 best playmakers in basketball. I do think we have to acknowledge this down year, but if this is a down year for Trey Young, that really speaks to how great of a player he is because his down year is a career year for at least 95% of the NBA. Say what you want about Ja off the court or on Twitter, but he's an incredible player. He's the franchise player on, in my opinion, the best young team in basketball. He's an explosive scorer with unreal rim pressure that's gotten better every season, and he's also an elite passing playmaker which makes everything he does even more incredible because it expands his game. And I also believe that his passing is his most underrated skill because of the viral nature of his highlights. Ja has proven he's all-NBA good already, 
and the way he's improved every year has him on a superstar track if he isn't a superstar already. We can't overlook the injury histories and concerns with Zion, but we also can't overlook that he's statistically and eye test wise no worse than a top two most dominant offensive player in basketball when healthy. He's one of the most dominant young players basketball has ever seen, but he's more than a scorer. He's a super high field player, he's a skilled player as well, he's a pretty good handle, pretty good passer. I know the injuries are a concern and we can't act like they aren't, but even with that, Zion will be a top tier player in the league for many years. He's just that good. Darius Garland has done things as a point guard at a young age that are rare. He's proven he can be responsible for every factor of offense as a playmaker on a playoff caliber team in just his third NBA season. He's a gifted playmaker and an electric scorer which is a combo that makes for a great point guard in modern basketball. For a player who was considered to be the worst in the NBA as a rookie, to see his rise to an all-NBA level has been special, and he's going to be the ends in for potentially a special Cavs team for years to come. Jordan Poole is similar to Darius Garland in the sense that he had a really bad rookie season. In fact, it statistically is one of the worst rookie seasons from a player who got consistent minutes. But like Garland, Poole progressed into one of the best young players in basketball. Poole is the only player I'll be talking about in this video that has a ring at this point. I know he wasn't the main guy on the team, but he was a factor in the Warriors winning that title. He's an electric scorer with incredible shot creating and handle gifts. He has contact balance that I've seen only a few other players ever have. He has potential to be a really good suitor. And when he's hot, there are few guys that are more fun to watch. Oh yeah, and being mentored by a top two point guard ever for his entire young career has helped. But even with that, on his own right, Poole is a special player. Kelton Johnson might be the most underrated young player in basketball. He's a power wing forward type who's gotten better every season of his career, especially when he's gotten more minutes. He's a super tough player that might not ever be a superstar in his career, but I think he can be a good player and potentially a cornerstone for the Spurs. He's averaging 21 points a game at 23 years old, which is really impressive. And even with the Spurs being bad, he's been really promising. Anthony Edwards has made some of the most promising improvements from a linear perspective over the first three years of his NBA career. Points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, and efficiency have gone up every season. He has the physical gifts that can't be matched at the guard spot. He entered the league and was immediately the best athlete and the most physical athlete at the two guard spot, which is very because he was 19 years old entering the league, and that just doesn't happen for most 19 year olds. He also has the skills as a shot creator that make him one of the best young players in basketball. And when you combine shot creating skills with unteachable physical gifts, you get something really deadly. I think Ant can be one of the best scorers and players in the league, and if he continues with the progression at the rate he has, he will be an MVP candidate sooner than later, and furthermore, an MVP candidate for years to come. I know it's been up and down year three for Lamelo, but he still has the potential to be one of the best point guards in basketball. In my opinion, he's already one of the ten best. To me, he's one of the three best pure passing playmakers in the sport. His feel for the game is unmatched, and he still manipulates defenses at a generational level. He still has things to work on but he's one of the few bright spots on a pretty bad Hornets team. I don't know if I can name a player who's proven me wrong more than Tyrese Halliburton. I wasn't very high on him as a prospect. I thought 12 was proper range for him in that draft where many thought at pick 12 it was a steal, and it turns out he should have gone much higher. Halliburton has improved significantly as a self creator which has been a big swing factor for him. He's one of the best passers and suitors in the world. He's a great connecting passer and growing as a primary passer. This season in Indiana, he's showing that he's an all-star talent because he made the all-star team. And he's also proving he's a cornerstone for Indiana and one of the best point guards in the world, as well as one of the most seamless players in basketball scheme-wise. Ironically enough, the only other player in NBA history with the first name Tyrese that's gotten real minutes is the complete opposite when it comes to my pre-draft views. I had a top 4 grade on Tyrese Maxey as a prospect, and he's proven me right. Maxey is proving why he should have never fallen outside of the top 5, let alone the top 20 like he did in real life. 
He's an electric scorer with good complementary playmaking skills. He's one of the fastest players in the league, has one of the best floaters in basketball, he's a good three-point shooter, and he has proven he plays his best when the lights get brightest. Like with his Spurs teammate Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell is a player I feel like is underrated by most fans. He's already the ideal 3 and D wing, and he can be even more than that in my opinion. He's an excellent three-point shooter, he has on-ball juice, he's an excellent defensive player, he's a good secondary passer, and in my opinion, a building block and a cornerstone on the wing for the Spurs. I feel like the Spurs have pieces that can be real contributors for them in the future, and I feel like their young core is going a bit underrated. I know Cade had a slow start to year two, and then he got injured and was out for the rest of the season, but that doesn't change how special of a talent he is. He's a big good wing that is a legit PO playmaking creator. He has potential to be a top two scorer and passer. He has the mindset and intangibles you look for in a franchise player. He has shown multiple times on the tape when healthy that he can be a franchise level guy in the future. Although again, he still does need some work. But I do think looking at his tape and looking at what he did before the NBA, he was well worth going first overall in the draft. Hopefully he can bounce back in year 3 when healthy, and show the world why he's that guy. Evan Mowry was legitimately an elite defender in his rookie season. He has shown us even further in year 2 why he was so touted as one of the best big prospects of the last 10 years. He's versatile on both ends of the floor. He has good like movement skills, high feel as a defender, a better passer than his numbers indicate, and has a super high ceiling offense. Although I do think that there are some concerns with his mindset as a scorer, but I do think he has all the tools to be a really good one. He's one of the reasons the Cavs have such a bright future, along with two other players I already talked about in this video. I think Franz Wagner can be all NBA good. I think Paolo is the franchise centerpiece in Orlando, more on him soon, but Franz is an incredible player in his own right. I think he's a great defensive player, I think he can be all defense level good. I also believe that his defense gets a bit undersold because of how good he's been on offense, and more importantly, how much he's improved on offense with his scoring mindset compared to what he was before the NBA. I think he can be one of the best scoring wings in basketball, good slicer, good shooter, good handle, all the tools you look for in the self-creative, also can play off ball. And it all is even more insane when you factor in that he's 6 foot 10. I know Jalen Green has had an up and down year too, but I think the encouraging signs are being undersold a bit. He has incredible rim pressure for a guard that's 178 pounds in his second NBA season. He's one of the most athletic players in the league. He has all the soft creating tools in the world. Yes, he does have defensive problems when it comes to effort. Yes, he does have tunnel vision problems at times, but he has too many skills you just can't teach. He's already a dangerous slasher. And that's with the context of his handle still being a bit shaky at times. You have to be a special athlete to do something like that. I think Josh Giddy could be the best passing playmaker in the league from a connecting role perspective if he isn't already. I truly believe that he is an argument for best connecting passing playmaker right now. Not in the future, right now. He's a tall guard with unreal passing skills and feel. He's been growing as a scorer as far as mindset and aggressive goes, and he fits any team in the league, but especially with his OKC team that's been built around, say, Goldis Alexander. Giddy could be the second or third guy on a contender one day, and it wouldn't shock me at all if that team was OKC, and it also wouldn't shock me at all if he made an all-star team or two in his career. Cam Thomas might be the most intriguing player I talk about, and the reason is that I've never seen a player like this. I have seen players who are really good at scoring, but aren't good at really anything else in the past. But none of them have the tools that Cam does. Cam is a complete scorer. He can create off the dribble. He can somewhat shoot off the cats. He's an elite pull-up shooter. He scores well on three levels. He's a great player when it comes to drawing contact. In general, just a great scorer. He has legit superstar level scoring tools, but he really doesn't do anything else outside of that. If Cam was even 25% good at everything else, passing, defense, rebounding, as he is as a scorer, he would be one of the best young players in basketball right now. 
but regardless, he's extremely fun to watch. I think he could be the J.O. Smith of this generation. Herb Jones is one of my favorite defensive players to watch. He's extremely smart, he's extremely versatile, and he just affects the game in so many ways that don't show up in the box glue all the time. He's the kind of player every title team has, the glue guy. He's not a bad offensive player, but he isn't a great one either. He is good enough to play in crunch time, however, which is a good sign. He's not a liability. Players that can impact the game without scoring a single point the way Herb does are extremely valuable and deserve to be recognized more even if they don't put up big time numbers. I know Paulo has been struggling recently, kind of has hit that rookie wall, but you can't ignore the good with him either, especially when for the most part he's shown the signs of superstar potential as a rookie. He's a 6'10", 250 pound forward with the fluidity and movement skills of a guard, the basketball skills of a guard, great handle, pretty good self creator and someone that draws fouls at a high rate, a rate that you just don't see from rookies. He also is a pretty good passer as well. The potential is there for Paolo to be one of the most unstoppable players in the league as a scorer, as well as one of the best all around players in the league. Chet Holmgren is a player that I'm super excited to watch next season. Obviously he missed this season because of an offseason injury after he got drafted, but he's a world class off blocker with a super high motor, he has guard like skills on offense, I don't think he'll ever be this big time scorer, but I do think that he can be a good one, similar to how I feel about Evan Mobley. I think a red shirt season where he's with an NBA team, around NBA players, with NBA trainers, just focusing on adding functional weight strength to his frame will do him wonders, and he could be in for a monster rookie season in 2023, 2023. The track record for top picks who missed their first season because of an injury is pretty high when it comes to the success following that injury, and Seth might be the next in line for that. Benedict Matherin is a player that has confidence that is all but required to be a star in modern basketball. He has elite shooting upside, he's an explosive athlete, he excels on and off the ball. I think he could be a Ray Allen, the early career one, or Bradley Beal type player at his best as one of the better shooters in the world with on-ball creating juice while running second units and off-ball spot-up role next to a creator. I think he's just going to be at the very least a good player and I think potentially a great one. Jaden Ivey might be the most audacious basketball player I've ever seen. He plays at one speed, 100 miles per hour. Now this has led to turnovers and mistakes, a lot of them to say the least. But with time and development, I think he can learn to deal with him. He's one of the fastest players in the league and is impossible to stop in the open four and has a quick first step. He's a good passer, he can play both on and off the ball, he's freakish in transition. I think he's a key piece for the Pistons and will be for years to come. I think AJ Griffin has top 5 suitor in the world potential. He has an extremely impressive style profile despite being one of the youngest players in the league. He can shoot off the catch, he can shoot off the dribble, he can shoot off the standstill, he can shoot off movement, he can hit threes, mid range shots, he attacks closeouts really well, and he has a good touch around the basket. A really impressive floater for a young player and especially a young player that is no more for their physical frame. He's built like a tank, which makes the fact that, again, he's one of the youngest players in the league even more impressive. Jalen Dern is one of my personal favorite basketball players. It may be hard to believe because he's built like a tank, but he is one of the youngest players in the NBA. In fact, he actually is the youngest player in the NBA. He's a high motor player with monster defensive potential. He's someone that I think can be one of the best soft blockers in basketball in a few years, but he's also extremely smart when it comes to basketball as well. Now, that's not to say he doesn't have his rookie mistakes, times he gets caught lacking, things like that on the court, but he is someone that leads opposing offenses very well. He's a great defensive communicator. I think he could grow into a quarterback of defense role, making sure everyone's in the right place making sure that things go according to plan on defense. He's also a better passer than the numbers indicate as well. He's a player that you really have to see in person to understand how good they are. And he's a player that's going to be great for years to come in my opinion as one of the cornerstones for the Pistons and in my opinion is one of their long term bigs for years to come. Everyone who watches basketball knows who Victor Wembanyama is. He's the demigod you would have to use a glitch or a PC mod on 2K to make because 2K doesn't believe it's realistic to be super tall and have that kind of potential. 
but that's where Wembenyama is. He's a beast on offense. He can dribble. He's growing as a shooter. He can create offense for himself. He's a growing passer. And he can also do the traditional big stuff like catching lobs, rolling to the basket, posting up. He's elite defensively, one of the best defensive prospects I've ever seen. Super high feel for the game on that end of the court. Elite shot blocker. Can play multiple defensive coverages. He's just extremely versatile on both ends of the court. And oh yeah, he's 7 foot 5 and has an 8 foot wingspan. If literally one of the three best prospects of all time wasn't in the same class as him, Scoot Henderson would be the runaway top pick in the upcoming 2023 NBA draft. He's the closest thing an American prospect has come to being what Luka was as a prospect in terms of finding high level success at a super young age against pro level competition that they have no business being as good against. Scoot has been a star in the G League since he was 17 years old. He put up 31 points in a game at 17 against pro level competition. Doing things most 17 year old prospects that become stars haven't come close to doing it that age. He's a freak athlete that literally has no flaw in this regard. He's fast, quick, strong, flexible, and has great balance. He's extremely skilled, great handle, great shot creator, incredible passer and playmaker in general. He draws contact well, and his feel for the game is off the charts. Scoot is one of the five best prospects I've ever evaluated, number four to be exact, and he has a chance to be a special player in the NBA. Whoever gets the second overall pick in the upcoming 2023 draft will be overjoyed to get a prospect like Scoot because in most years, this kind of prospect wouldn't be available with the second overall pick. Amen Thompson is a player that fundamentally changed the way I view playmaking. I think he's easily the number three prospect in the 2023 NBA draft. He's one of the best passing playmakers I've ever seen. And he's also one of the most unique, in fact, he actually is the most unique passing playmaking prospect I've ever seen. He's going to be one of the five to eight best athletes in the NBA the moment he gets drafted. He utilizes very physical gifts and athleticism to create advantages as a passer that nobody else can because nobody else has this combination of playmaking gifts and athleticism. He also is a player that has potential to be one of the best defenders at the guard spot as well. He needs to work on his side. That's a big area of concern. He has shown some encouraging signs, but even with that, it is something he will need to work on to at least be competent. And even with the shot concerns, he still is a top three player for me in this class, which really speaks to how good I think he is, because this is a really good class, and I also think it speaks to how good his other skills are. Zed Howard will be a good NBA player. His skill set is just too good for me to believe otherwise. At the very least, he's a six foot eight wing that can hit threes off ball and pass in a complimentary role. Every team in the league could use that. But I think he does have star upside. At 6'8", he's a great suitor. He can play both on and off the ball. He has good handle indicators. He's a good passer. He can play many roles in many lineups. He fits all 30 NBA teams. And to me, he's a top 5 player in the class because of his high four, and in my opinion, his high ceiling. I know people believe I don't like Brandon Miller because of my placement of him in mock drafts and somewhat of the way I've talked about him, but that isn't the case. I think Brandon Miller is good. I think he's a top 10 talent in the class. I just have concerns about self-creation with him that make me hesitant to put him in the top five and also hesitant to put him in this next Paul George talk that some people have. But he's a six foot nine wing with ridiculous shooting ability has an absurd shooting profile, a good complimentary passer, athletic in transition off the ball, and is a good defender. That skill set is good enough to believe that he has a super high four, and maybe he proves me wrong and does have a high ceiling, and he does improve as he's a creative. I mean, we talked about a player in Tyrese Halliburton earlier who did prove me wrong in this regard, and he ended up being an all-star, and hopefully that is the case with Brandon Miller, because I would love to see that. Jairus Walker is a physical monster. He's been one since he was 15 years old. He's a really good athlete. He's physically ready for NBA basketball right now, and has been physically ready for NBA basketball for years now. He has a good feel for the game, high motor, good passer. I think he has potential to be the best non-Victor Wembanyama defender in the class, and he's shown encouraging signs as a suitor and creator. He's improved over the years in these areas. He's a high floor player because at the very least, I think he can be an energy glue guy. But at his best, I think he can not only be one of the better two-way players in the league, 
but also one of the better all-around players in the league. Isaiah Collier is one of the best passing prospects I've seen in recent memory. He's a throwback, old-school, pass-first kind of player, but that doesn't mean he's a scoring liability, because he does have scoring ability. While he loves to set up his teammates, he can take over games as a scorer if needed. He's a physical guard that loves to play volleyball. He's growing as a shooter. He's a super high field player that's extremely smart. I think he has a high floor because of his solidified skills. And I think he's in contention for the top pick in 2024, as well as being someone I believe is going to be a joy to watch at USC next season. However, if you were to ask me who I believe is the way too early top prospect for 2024, it would be Ron Holland. Ron Holland is going to be playing at Texas next season, and he might have the best motor I've ever seen from a prospect. He plays hard all the time. He honestly is kind of psychotic in this regard. He's a freak athlete. He's a good passer. He's someone that does have primary creation upside in my opinion. He's growing as a suitor. It's been the most encouraging area he's grown in in my opinion over the years. He has the potential to be a defensive monster, he's a great rebounder, and I think he has potential to be one of the best all-around players in the league one day. DJ Wagner has a chance to be the first ever third generation NBA player. He's the son of DeJuan Wagner and the grandson of Milt Wagner. He is the third best player in his recruiting class in my opinion. He's a quick and sifty guard, high field player, all the scoring tools in the world, good passer. He reminds me a lot of prospect Markel Fultz, and Fultz was one of the better guard prospects I've ever seen. And what he's been able to do in Orlando, despite everything that's happened to him post being drafted first overall, does speak to his talent. I think DJ can be what Fultz could have been without the unfortunate early career roadblocks which really speaks to how good I think DJ can be. Matas Buzelis is a super high ceiling prospect. He's a 6 foot 10 wing with legit guard skills. He has potential to be a great passer. He's growing as a shooter. He is a bit of a risk because he's still really raw, but you see the signs of potential. I do believe that he has the highest ceiling among the 2024 draft guys as of right now, which is why I do believe that he could be the number one pick one day. But as of right now, I don't think he's the number one guy because even though he does have the high ceiling, there are more risks involved with him than some of the other guys I've talked about. But Julie Knight is going to be a great situation for him, and he should be a player that develops really well in that system and, again, potentially could be the number one pick. I don't know what to tell you guys. Bronny James is good. Really good, in fact. He's worthy of being ranked highly on his own merit, not just because of his dad's name. He's a good passer, really good shooter, a good defender, and he's a high field player. He's unselfish to a fault at times almost, I would say, but even with that, he is someone that I think has potential to be a really good NBA player and maybe one of the better connecting playmakers at the higher levels of the game. And honestly, I would go as far to say that he's underrated and should be ranked much higher than that 30s range that he is right now. Cam Boozer is the son of Carlos Boozer, who's one of the most underrated power forwards of his generation. However, Carlos isn't the only former Duke power forward that is connected to Cam Boozer, because Cam reminds me a lot of another former Duke power forward, Paolo Banquero. Cam has all the tools in the world, great frame, high feel, shot creating ability, 3 point shooting range, passing skills, incredible defensively, and at just 15 years old, he legitimately might be the best player in high school basketball regardless of class. He's proven to be worthy of consideration for that title because he's been dominant against other top competition. Obviously, we are a few years away from Cam entering the league, and it's way too early to project what he will be in the NBA. But if this is what he is now at 15 years old, and it's only the start, where the best is yet to come, he has a chance to be really special. The final player I'll be talking about is Cooper Flag. Flag is a monster defensively. He's the best player as a sophomore on a really good Montverde team that has multiple All-American seniors. He reminds me a bit of Franz Wagner. He's a good passer, versatile scorer, has unreal defensive potential, super high field, block shots, gets steals, and somebody that I just think is going to be a rock solid player at the very least and has potential to be a great player but again only time will tell with that but I can't wait to see how he develops over the next few years 
and he's in one of the best developmental situations in high school basketball. So there you have it. I just talked about all the players I think will be the future of NBA basketball and basketball in general. Some will be stars, some won't be. Some will be players that have a high impact and are important despite not putting up big numbers. Only time will tell about how most of these players turn out, minus some of the players I talked about early on that have already solidified themselves as stars in the NBA. But I am excited to see how the future of basketball looks. The talent entering the league over the next few years is incredible, and watching them grow and develop before the NBA, as well as how they develop in the NBA, is always going to be a fun process for me, and will continue to be a fun process for me hopefully for years to come.